Welcome on Bonaire. My name is Jan van der Ploeg. And I'm Roxanne Francisca. We work for Stinapa and today we are going to be talking to you about the Bonaire Sargassum response, closing the science practice gap in nature conservation. Stichting Nationale Parken, Stinapa Bonaire, is an independent foundation mandated by the island government to protect the national parks on Bonaire. This includes the Washington Slagbuy National Park and the Bonaire National Marine Park, which covers all the reefs around the island, including Lac Bay, where we are now. Let us take you on a short trip to Lac Bay to look at the issues we have here. Lac Bay is the largest lagoon of Bonaire. It is home to some of the Dutch Caribbean's largest mangrove forests and also contains species such as the queen conch, the green turtle and even flamingos. As an internationally recognized Ramsar site, this site is of crucial importance for the maintenance of bird biodiversity globally. Lac Bay is an incredible important ecosystem for Bonaire, but an environmental disaster is unfolding here. Every year between, Ju between February and June, sargassum, a brown weed, is floating into the bay. Tons and tons of the brown weed wash up on the shore uh, where it starts decaying and rotting, releasing a very nasty smell, hydrogen sulfide, which is a major threat to public health. The sargassum is rotting, uh, suffocating seagrass meadows, um, having a negative impact on our mangrove forest and leaking nutrients in which have a major impact on our coral reefs. Sargassum is a genus of brown algae containing about 150 species. When we talk about sargassum, we're mostly referring to the free-floating or planktonic species that you encounter in the Sargasso Sea. The Sargasso Sea is a giant patch of sargassum in the northern Atlantic that is an incredibly productive ecosystem. It is home to a huge variety of fish species, birds, turtles, dolphins, you name it. Under normal, normal circumstances, sargassum is an incredibly productive system. But it seems that at some point between 2009 and 2010, there was a switch in the system. We reached a tipping point. At this point, some of the patches broke off from the Sargasso Sea and floated down south to close to the coast of South America. At this point, we see in the Alternative Floating Algae Index, or the AFI, that there were huge increases in the amount of chlorophyll or algae that we could see on the oceans. It is, the, it is hypothesized that this is caused because of changing ocean currents, as well as increased nutrification of the oceans, resulting in massive blooms. Now, periodically, for us, between February and June, some of the sargassum from the southern Atlantic breaks off and floats into the Caribbean, resulting in massive influxes here in Bonaire. Sargassum has a major impact on our island. It is uh, impacting our tourism economy, our ecosystems and it's a risk for public health. In 2018 the island experienced a massive influx and volunteers, students, Stinapa rangers, everybody helped in cleaning up the sargassum. We used rakes, we used our hands to get as much sargassum out of the, of the water but in the end we removed perhaps not more than 5%, nobody knows. The impact remains severe and we are struggling to find ways to scaling up our cleaning operations. After the massive influxes of sargassum in 2018 and 2020, it quickly became clear that our removal efforts were not enough. Having a singular extraction point at Foodies was not enough to remove all the sargassum we needed to remove. In order to scale up our efforts, we cleared some additional areas at Punta Calbas where we could put in heavy machinery to assist us with getting the sargassum out of the water. Here we have a major scaling problem. Just to give an indication, in 2022, in two days time, about 40,000 cubic meters of sargassum floated in. We were, with all the effort and resources we had, able to remove less than 5% of it. So it's very clear that new methods are needed to systematically and effectively clean up sargassum. And this is where we need science to come to the rescue. 
Over the years, Sinapa has partnered with multiple organizations looking at various impacts of sargassum. There have been studies looking at sargassum valorization, alternative uses of the sargassum, and even some studies on how to clean it up. The sargassum problem fits in very well with some of the global themes that we're all looking at. Things such as waste valorization, innovation through technology, and of course, global climate change. The reality is, it's not enough. Stinapa invests significant amount of energy, time, resources in those research partnerships. We guide uh, researchers around, we write support letters, and that costs us a lot of time and energy. The reality is also that a lot of research doesn't really address the real issues that we are facing. But it costs us, as an organization, a lot of time to accommodate the needs and ideas of those visiting researchers. In the end, we have to address this research practice gap and making sure that research addresses the concerns and needs of the organization to combat sargasm. While both science and conservation are working towards achieving the same goal, there are some marked differences in their approaches. Science is mostly concerned with research questions resulting in scientific articles, which we honestly don't always have the time to read and is a process that takes a long time. For conservation, what we really need are practical solutions, fact sheets that are easy to understand and solutions to our immediate problems. So how do we overcome this research conservation gap? How do we connect science and society? I do think that there are a couple of steps, very practical steps that we can undertake jointly to address those problems. First and foremost, it's by jointly defining a common research agenda. Not ad hoc, not quickly, but by real genuine participation from all stakeholders. A bit less opportunistic, but more towards real partnership. I also think that we have to work much much more towards co-authorship and jointly producing scientific outputs. A third point is by that we have to invest much more in building the capacity of islanders, of young people on the islands who can make a real difference on the long term. Let us also make sure that if we publish something, that we publish it open access. Too often we still have to face the barriers of paywalls um, and sometimes if we read it, if we want to read it, we can't. I think scientists also should focus a bit less on producing scientific articles and a bit more on communicating more directly with the stakeholders. For example, a fact sheet, a video or uh, a, a short article in, a pub, in the public media. And above all, it's a matter of working together for a long term, longitudinal research efforts which generate much more information, practical results to really address the real life problems that we are facing here on Bonaire. Thank you so much for listening and we hope to see you soon here in the Dutch Caribbean. Cheers! Cheers, Rox.